Well, hey, good morning, everybody. Um, morning update. This is day 121 and no, 122, and it's the 2nd of July. And I'm at uh, Bear Fence um, Hut. Um, got in here just at sunset last night. Um, the one of the guy in the shelter, so I went ahead and uh, and, uh, and sheltered last night since I was running out of daylight. Um, didn't sleep real well in the shelter. Um, uh, a because of the mice and B the mosquitoes, but uh, but that was the the option that I, I chose last night. Um, uh, got to the uh, Lewis Mountain Campground at about um, oh about five after five, and they closed at six. So I went ahead and walked out of the camp store, thinking I'd just grab something to eat, you know, and uh, and just just keep going. And I was just soaked. Um, and uh, they're like, oh no, we're open till seven, so you can go ahead and get a shower and throw some laundry in. Um, so, I mean, they just had, they just had one machine, one washer, one dryer. So I um, got, got in the shower, uh, put my four quarters in for my five minutes, and uh, and I got cleaned up real fast, and then uh, uh, got the got my, my laundry done. Uh, had some food for supper, did a, got a resupply taken care of, so I didn't have to have to walk back this morning going back up the trail. So so that was a blessing, and uh, that way I'm going to do the 11.5 today to get to the next shelter, which is not much. So I will divert and go into Big Meadows to the wayside there. There's a There's got to be a hamburger there calling my name with a, with a uh, maybe a blackberry milkshake. So now it's point... It's a point four to get there and a point four back, so I think you should be able to do that. It's about eight forty five, so getting ready to take off now. So anyway, we'll see you later. See you down the trail. Bye. Oh, I must admit, Shenandoah is a very beautiful place to hike. It is nice up here. Today is exceptional. It's a so a nice cool breeze blowing. Humidity seems to be down just a little bit. Ah, so it's actually very, very pleasant. If I could just close my eyes, I could uh, almost imagine it being fall. Ah. Yesterday was a hard, psychologically hard day for me. The trail was not bad at all. The trail was actually pretty easy, although there were four climbs we had to do with no switchbacks. Um, but uh, I don't know what it was about yesterday. Uh, there was even water spaced a little more evenly than in days past. Maybe it's just a, an accumulation of things, you know. Plus, uh, about the, I think it was, was that the fourth day or the fifth day? It may have been the fifth day. You get to the point where you just, you just stink. And you need a shower and maybe, I know it was really, really a blessing. One of those tender mercies that uh, come upon us now and then that they were open an hour later and he actually stayed open until it was almost 7 30 before he really closed he just just a nice guy who you know wanted to help out campers and hikers so uh getting that shower and putting some clean clothes on and being able to sleep last night and not smell myself uh, I think it really kind of does kind of have a sort of psychological boost so anybody thinking of doing this thinking of going some of these young kids do two weeks before they stop in and do anything and I submit this one guy and I swear I don't think he had washed his clothes yet on the trail they were they were in pretty bad shape pretty dirty I mean ground in just you could tell it's been a long time since those pants had been washed if ever you know those are those are dirty hikers Sunny Elmer Sunny Bank in. If you show up with a reservation and you're a dirty hiker, he'll tell you no. You're not staying here. You know, he's 80 years old and he's through a height and he doesn't have to put up with anything. If you're a dirty hiker, you don't stay. So and that's down in Hot Springs. Talked to a girl that uh, witnessed that event with a kid that came in and he's just like Nope, no room in the inn. Turn him away. Another hiker that was clean came in a little bit later and he's like, yep, I got a room. <laughs> you know? So, 
Yeah. So I feel much feel much better today. And the top yesterday's kind of discouraging day off. The kid that was in the shelter with me, he's on day 50. I'm on day 121. You know? Yeah, I know I'm hiking my own hike and I'm doing my own thing. But that does. It does have an effect on you. You know, it kind of makes you feel beat down a little bit. So yeah. Yeah, yesterday was one of those days. But just, uh, and you have those. You have those moments of discouragement. And, you know, that's, that's the way it is in, in life. Sometimes you love your job and sometimes you hate your job. And I was a helicopter pilot. I love my job. But there were days that I hated being in the Air Force. I gotta tell you that. I think uh, my second Christmas deployed to Turkey. My third Thanksgiving deployed to Turkey. That was a tough one. Yeah, that, uh, that went five times I went to Turkey in a three year period. And I managed to get somebody to take one of my rotations one summer so that I could uh, take a family vacation. I hadn't had for a while to go to a reunion. Um, had I not done that and had I taken that deployment, I would have gotten 365 days overseas deployed within a three year period of time. And I would have gotten what we call an overseas long ribbon while I was stationed in Florida. Normally you get those long ribbons when you're like, like they station you in Germany for three years. So, uh, uh, yeah, Turkey, interesting place. I have to tell you a little bit about that. Yeah, something called the alley at the time. You'd go off base and you go down there and they had these restaurants and you know, you could go in and for, I think it was like five to 7,000 Turkish lira, you could, uh, you could get a, you know, shish kebab meal with this called lizard tongue bread. It was just a long bread that they, they rolled out with sesame in it on it and they would bake it in a, a wood kiln and bring us out some fresh butter for it. And you know, and that was, I don't know, that was like about a $5 equivalent meal or something at the time. But you, you look over at the Turkish who were ordering their, their food and the same thing that we spent 5,000 lira for was only like 50 lira. <laughs> <laughs> on their menu <laughs> but the, because the exchange rate was just so bad that uh, it was always fun to kind of go down and get a meal down there go down there and dicker with the, the vendors for stuff I think I bought a, a leather a G2 kind of a navy style flying jacket down there probably a $350 jacket I think I probably didn't spend $100 for it and, and uh Got some gold. A lot of people would buy Turkish rugs or, or, or Persian rugs, rather, uh, and uh, you know, because they could buy one for a thousand dollars and ship it home. It was worth three. Problem is, you had to find somebody that wanted to buy it for three. So we had some of our enlisted guys with max or credit cards buying three rugs and then hoping to sell them when they got home and make bank on it. But then they never could, or at least I never found out if they did. So. I resisted doing that. What I bought, I bought for for me to have for the family. Here's Skyline Drive down there. That's one thing about the the trail up here. You hear you hear a lot of road noise. It's kind of hard to get away from it. Yeah, when we were there, the Turks didn't trust us, even though we were NATO. They thought that because we were special ops, we would want to go out and fly. We'd probably go out and supply the Peshmerga with weapons and stuff like that. So. We always had to have a Turkish officer on board with us. And at first they were they were special ops kind of type guys, so they kind of understood our mission. But then over time, the longer they had to do that, they kept running out of people, and so they started supplying us with, with you know infantry officers and stuff. And you know, we get out, if it was too cold when we're out flying, they'd go, time to go home. We had to turn around and go back. We couldn't we couldn't fly if they said they said go home. So the whole, the whole time I was over there, for a whole year, I'm gonna hold on a second here until that truck passes. So for a whole year, I uh, never flew outside the mandatory 50 mile circle. Other guys got to go on missions and rescues that seemed like my, 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 uh, my time in the, in the queue to 
to either be there or to uh, be on alert. Never really generated anything. I think the closest I got, there was a, an American out of, uh, and his son, I think, out of, out of uh, the embassy that uh, were lost up in some mountains, right on the edge of the 50 mile circle. So we got to go up and kind of search along the edge of that. And that was about the only excitement, other than having my wingman have an engine failure and short final into this little, I think it was called Pine LZ or Pine Top LZ or, or something like that. It was a, basically a little bluff. And we were in a four ship, well, it was two, 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 two ships. We just joined up as a four ship to go air refuel. My uh, air refueling probe wouldn't extend in the air, but it had done it on the ground, so it was probably what's called the weight on wheel switch. So we made a four ship approach into Pine. I was chalk three, and chalk four had an engine failure about 50 feet. We were at max gross weight. So he hit hard, blew the pilot's door off, uh, hit hard enough to activate the, the crash uh, uh, suppression system. So it, it, the fire suppression system blew. The pilot's seat struck all the way down. Uh, and uh, anyway, we had to get the Marines to come in with a great big CH-53 Echo model. It's got three engines on it and uh, sling it out so we got some of those pictures of you know you know he ain't heavy he's my brother you know lifting this the 60 out and uh we uh, we fixed it back in Inserlik. but uh you know wherever we went to fly it it would always creak like a like a beer you know like an empty aluminum beer can you know you know how that look little sound to it when you lift off and we just knew something was cracked somewhere and eventually when we got back and got it into phase and really started tearing it apart they, yeah they found this structural crack we've been finding this bird that way but you know when you're when you're deployed you got to do what you got to do when you're at war you do what you got to do you know so our whole mission over there is to protect the Kurds from some saying killing them but we had to always turn our turn our uh, turn our gaze the other way when the Turks went out and did it that was what was very disappointing and very discouraging to me that we let the we let the Turks go out and kill them well it's not that we let them they would uh, they would take advantage of our down days or our grounded days or our holidays and days we had no fly days that they'd, they'd go out and do it then Thinking that we wouldn't we wouldn't know about it, but we did. In many ways, that kind of feels like a wasted year of my life. I don't know how my other helicopter brother and Phil about their their experiences in Turkey, but uh, I think I think uh, I feel like it was kind of wasted. All right, anyway, I may make this is a long rant, isn't it? It's almost 12 minutes. I better better cut this off or this video is going to be so long nobody's going to want to watch it. All right, everybody. Hope you've enjoyed kind of walking through the morning here in the Shenandoah National Park headed to Big Meadows. Well, this was unexpected. Uh, pretty recent dates. Here's a 2006.
All right, when they say that you don't need to carry more than a day that half the food because you can stop at a wayside and uh, resupply and maybe eat, and this is what a meal looks like. Um, this was $22 and a $2 tip, and they didn't even put the chili on the chili cheese fries like I asked and paid for. Uh, the blackberry shake is not bad, five bucks. But I'll tell you, um, Lake Salada Burger in uh, New Mexico, man, they have a killer green chili cheeseburger and blackberry milkshakes, and their fries are, are fresh cut with uh, and they use uh, salt and pepper. Oh man, they're so good. Anyway, so if anybody ever out there find themselves in New Mexico, go to Blake's and get themselves a blackberry milkshake and a green chili cheeseburger, and it's just not going to cost you $24. About a mile down from the Big Meadows campground, still about 2.2 to go to Rock Springs Hut. A little bit of a vista here, but listen to the birds just chattering. Of course they stop. All right, the trail comes down from up there. The other side of that mountain is there is Big Meadows. Beautiful country. This kind of reminds me more of being out west. With this kind of rock and the pines here. It smells good. Birds are really singing today, it's amazing. This is Rock Springs Hut, halfway between Big Meadows and Skyland. And that's a uh, little Max down there baying at me. Been kind of following him around a little bit. Well, good news is he keeps the bears away. Looks like we got uh, some bear poles here. Looks like there's a bear box over there. There's a privy up there. We'll sit on the john and look at the sunset, it looks like. Let's see. Huh. Huh, okay. and I'll be able to take a look for some spots here in a minute. One tent. Hey, there. hey man. How's it going? Hey, little Max. You know me. Come on. <laughs> well, I was expecting to have a lot more people here in a weekend. There's just two, two tents here. Like. Well, here's my setup for the night. What I don't like is I'm on a slope. I don't know if you can see it or not, but the cabin is way down there. The shelter. So I'm kind of on a pretty good slope. Here is the actual tent site, which is flat. Would be a great place to have tented. And I would have loved to have put my hammock here, but there weren't any trees. So that's what I have to work with. It's a pretty good slope. I'm actually afraid that if I put stuff on my Tyvex down there, I'm going to end up with rolling downhill. So I may end up just putting everything in my pack, putting my rain cover on it, and just leaving it against the tree. That's, that may be what I end up doing. But uh, but I got my own little path right there down to the down to the to the connecting trail down to the shelter, so I don't have to mess with heading back down through the other other tenting spots over there. Although bear bag wise, I still may end up using that that cable that's down, that bear bag that hang that's down there. I don't know if you can see it or not, see that red bag that's hanging up. Move around and maybe you can see it, maybe not. I can't quite see it on the screen there. Uh, although there is a there is a possibility of hanging it pretty close. Of course, you're not supposed to hang your food close to where you're at, but you know, everybody's everywhere. So you're gonna, you're gonna hang it next to somebody. 
All right, I got these little black, black, little black flies that look like little bees. They bite and they draw blood, and they're all over me. I need to get some uh, insect repellent on here, get a little bit of dinner, and uh, call it a night. So everybody, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Hey everybody, this is Twinkle Toes. Yeah. He uh, he recognized me from YouTube, and uh, we're here at the uh, Rock Springs Hut. I think that's it, in the Shenandoahs. Anyway, you want to shoot a shout out to anybody? Yeah. Hey, Dad. How's it going? All right. Met this guy. How awesome How is that? that? Yeah, we watched your videos All together. right. I think this is either day 122 or 123. We'll nice. see. All right. See, see you ya. later. Bye.